an update on on PAV and also just going throughout this week, do you feel like uh, it's been business as, as usual for the guys? I know there's been a lot of hoopla kind of outside of the facility about uh, the atmosphere this weekend. Do you feel like the guys have handled that well and it's been business as usual? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's been different business because, you know, we came off a sweep and in, in really cold weather on the road against an SEC opponent and then had to travel or fly on Monday morning, which is very unique. And then we get the announcement full capacity. Um, Tuesday's game came with so many challenges. Uh, it was ridiculous. And our guys rose to the occasion and we were in control of that game for quite some time, you know, gave a couple guys a chance to play and a couple guys, you know, didn't do so well. That's just the cost of doing business in my opinion. But overall, um, I was impressed with Tuesday more than maybe any other Tuesday. And then Wednesday, kind of, again, back to business, we did our exact same, we've kind of fallen into a Wednesday routine and that's what we did. Um, but there was a different energy yesterday. I think the guys were glad they did well on Tuesday, breathe a fresh air or breath of fresh air that um, they were able to win the game and now get ready for something they're excited about, which so is Arkansas, so is Mississippi, whoever they're playing and everyone else. It's deep into the year. It's May. There's no school and it's SEC baseball. You have an update Lots on of Pav. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that. He's getting an x-ray in an hour. Um, yesterday he did throw. I, I think in an emergency situation as of yesterday, he could at least catch. Um, but obviously we're not going to play him unless he can hit. And, um, you know, we, we need to see what that x-ray looks like. So I'll shoot you a note when we get the, the answers. Lots of baseball to be played. Uh, got but got to change. Uh, John Will. Kristen. Uh, Hi, John. Hi, um, Coach. Lots of baseball to be played, and I don't think there's any question uh, you do celebrate the seniors this weekend. And while there are uh, eight that will be recognized, each has had an impact, and, and a handful of those were here before you got here. What is it like to see them go into their final home conference series with so much on the line? You know, it, it, it's just great to be around those guys every day. I sat next to a couple of them at breakfast um, this morning and good group of kids, uh, many who we inherited, many, many who we brought in, but the ones that are still in the locker room today as school's out and it's our fourth year being here, um, I, I think are here because they've got a lot of character. Um, senior day with our sport is always a little, I don't want to say goofy, but it's different because of the draft. Um, and so many other things that can happen. So while it's a group of guys that we want to celebrate the fact they're getting their degree, um, it's always interesting to see who will move on and who won't. Will Heflin was a part of that ceremony at one point, but Will Heflin will be pitching this weekend. So I, I like these guys being around as long as they want to be around. And I also like when guys have a chance for a pro opportunity, whether it's, you know, they want to go out as a free agent or late signee or first or second rounder. Uh, we want to help our guys move into pro ball as soon as they're ready and as soon as they want to as best we can. So there, there's always a little asterisk or side note to that stuff. But Sunday we'll have a little brief ceremony and it'll be one more thing the guys can kind of rally around a little bit. All right, we'll go to Ryan Shumpert next and then we'll go to Thomas Murphy after that. You talked about not liking having set roles in your bullpen. What Arkansas uh, does with Kevin Copps, how much does that kind of prove that strategy can be effective and then from your vantage point what makes him so effective as a pitcher well Kevin's effective because of his character I said that word earlier and um, he's a guy who comes from uh, humble beginnings as it relates to rankings or recruiting or anything like that um, but he's turned himself into a guy I mean he's he's like many of these guys extended one year because of COVID uh, but also he had surgery so to me those kind of balance out but He's the type of guy, if you give him enough time to figure something out, it could be anything, he's going to figure it out. And uh, seeing it from an opponent's eyes, um, even though I know Kevin and I'm happy for him, you don't like him having too much time because he'll evolve into what he has. And uh, he's a guy that's a jack of all trades out of the bullpen. I'm sure late in the season, if they had to start him, they could. Uh, he can go four innings and bounce back over the course of weekends. So, you know, Everyone's personnel is different. Everyone chooses to use their personnel different. And I think with Kevin, they've got a huge weapon 
and they're not afraid to use or unload that weapon at any point. And, um, you know, I'm sure we'll see him at some point this weekend. Hey, Tony, uh, I wanted to ask you about your continuing relationship with Dave. What's it, what's it like? And then just the fact that at the end of this weekend, whoever wins the series could be uh, a top alone, the SEC standings. Yeah, I, I think that um, has been mentioned enough. I now know that, but there's another week to go in the SEC. And, uh, you know, if you're in any major conference, it's crazy what can happen down the stretch or how one weekend can kind of turn things upside down a little bit. But in this weekend in particular, um, I mean, I don't even want to say best case scenario. Worst, just when you go on the road or you're at home and you're playing somebody, so many different things can happen with your RPI and, and the record and all that. Um, so I think the best time to kind of look up and see where you're at is when you're on the bus to Hoover and the SEC tournament is certainly something everyone wants to win, but it is kind of that one moment. The teams that are settled near the top can kind of catch their breath a little bit until then. I think it's best to kind of keep our nose down and keep going, especially where we're at in the history of our program. <laughs> Rod Monaco days, a little bit of a dip and kind of back on the climb, we, we still, even though I like our club a lot, we haven't done what some of these other programs have done in recent history. So to get caught looking at that stuff too much, um, I, I think would, would be a mistake. Okay. And then finally, um, you've lost one series this year. Arkansas has lost no series this year. How difficult is that to pull off weekend after weekend? Um, you know, it's ultimately how you're judged every year in the committee. When they sit down, they, they look at your series record. And, um, you know, the one we lost was a heartbreaker. I think um, that that Sunday was was a day where we just didn't play our best baseball for whatever reason. So when you go into each game, if you do get beat, you want to get beat with your best punch. And, um, you know, most of these series come down to one to one on Sunday or game three. And again, you want to throw your best punch. I think in that one series, Vanderbilt's a phenomenal team. Um, they're a national championship contender. But I think there was that one little thing where we just weren't ourselves that day for whatever reason. It wasn't because we didn't want to win. Um, so for each series, that's how we want to hold ourselves accountable. And because we've got a talented group and they've kind of got a will to win, we've been able to win majority of our series. But even to do that is difficult. So to string together a deal where you haven't lost any, um, I don't know what you can relate that to, throwing a no-hitter in the big leagues or anything like that. But in this league, um, you're, you're certainly making your own breaks and you're, you're maybe even catching a break here or there. All right. We'll go to Madison next and we'll go to Bob Holt after that. Hey coach, pivoting a little bit here. You talk about the history of this program, big news out of Rocky top today. Todd Helton has been selected for induction into the college baseball hall of fame. His name really speaks for itself around here. He doesn't need any type of introduction, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on today's news and kind of what help means to this program. You know, I, I think he means a lot for just the whole community because he's a local guy and um, he, he, he's a warrior, blue collar guy who is ultra competitive, bled, bled the orange and, um, you know, not an ego guy. Obviously, he was on the field because he, he believed in himself as much as anybody um, and just a tough, ultra tough competitor. But when he's around these guys or just out and about in the community, he doesn't expect, you know, to be held to a different standard or be weighted on quicker than somebody else. He just sees himself as a guy. And that's a pretty rare combination. And for our kids, you know, I know he's been a mentor to those guys that will be celebrated on senior day like Pete Durke and Luke. Um, but for the younger guys, um, you know, they just kind of are in awe of him. If they can shake his hand, they literally feel like uh, one of them said this one day. They hit better BP that day because they shook hands with Todd. So um, just just very happy and fortunate that I've got to cross paths with him and meet him. I respect the fact that he follows our team as close as he, he does. Um, but I'm happy any recognition he gets in his career because I, I think there's another thing that he needs to be recognized for uh, before all is said and done. And, and if people look at things the right way, then he'll get his just due it, it, with every uh, – with every organization or every group that's looking to honor him. Bob. Uh, hey, Tony, how you doing? Congrats Good, on all the success. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had some laptop issues. So I got on here a minute or two late, but I don't think you've been asked about this, but just how, how would you describe 
uh, your relationship with with Dave Van Horn, I guess, both uh, personally and professionally? Yeah, well, I think, um, you, you know, any anytime you have a boss, you, you want someone that uh, trusts you and is willing to give you the freedom to kind of do your thing and prove yourself. If you get hired, that means they thought you could do the job well. And, and so you want to be given the chance to prove that you can do that. And um, could not ask for a better environment to work in as an employee. Um, again, we've all been in bad ones. We've all been in good ones. At least I think so. And uh, that was a really good one for obvious reasons. I mean, the fans there are tremendous. The kids I got to be around were great. Uh, but but I really felt like I had a lot of breathing room. There was there was no uncomfortable moments at work every day. And so I've I've tried to make sure I implement that up here. And I'm sure I'm guilty of of not being that guy or hey, he's in a bad mood or he, he didn't like that I did this or that. But for the most part, I think the reason our kids have developed here is because that's been copied where I think we have the best pitching coach in the SEC. Everyone else probably thinks they do too. But Frank's resume is pretty dang good. I mentioned Q, our strength coach all the time, our base coaches, Ross Kivett and Josh Elander, and there's other folks too. Um, I, I think they're the ones developing our players that are all of a sudden kind of jumping up and, and biting uh, the blue bloods of the conference here and there. And, and so that's one thing that, like I said, has kind of been Xerox copied. And, you know, Dave said, you, you guys talk, you know, during the season, I don't know if you, maybe you don't talk this week, but kind of what, what, what does he mean to you? Uh, and he has, he's got a pretty big coach in tree now. What, what does he mean to you personally? Well, um, you know, to, to bring me into the conference, what he means is this is how I got the job. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of ways I could go with that, but when they first called, um, you know, the SEC is probably seen as arrogant by other people outside of it, um, whether it be football, baseball, even other sports, but it's for a good reason. I mean, there's just more people that are fired up about this thing. That's why the crowds are so big and the, the talent is as good as anywhere in the country year in and year out, at least with our sport. So it's kind of like, almost like Hollywood. Once you're in the circle, you're in the circle, but some people never catch that break even though they're worthy of it or they've earned it, um, they, they don't get that break to kind of be invited to the party, so to speak. And for whatever reason, um, he and the staff there believed in me and brought me into the league. That's a monster. You know, they called it the men's league. Um, you, you know, I remember Jorney saying that all the time when I first got there and got me into that league. And if I was not in the sec, I never would have been a candidate for this job. Um, Right or wrong, I think administrators feel the more you know this league, the better suited you are to maybe work in the league. Um, obviously, there's been guys that have proven that wrong, too. So, um, again, I sit here now at a job that I love, at a place that I love because of all that. And then you, you mentioned, Josh, you, know, you were at Arkansas. He was at Arkansas. You got Luke on your staff. Does this uh, series with so much on the line, national seeding, SEC lead, and now you're playing your old – stomping ground so to speak I know you swept Missouri too um did, did you guys have a little extra juice for this for this series I think it's hard to have extra juice for um uh, you know <clears throat> this series in particular I don't mind saying that um because the two clubs have done well and we're getting near the end um but it, it certainly adds to the build-up there, there's there's more things to it if, if there's a boxing match or uh, a college football Saturday or back in the old day, there used to be just Sunday night, Sunday baseball, you know, one game on, on ABC or something like that. The more people can talk about and build it up, it, the more exciting it makes it. And there, there's a lot of stuff you could write about or talk about going into this series. But once somebody else play ball, I think we'll give a little kid a chance to do that as many do. Uh, once that young tyke says play ball, all that, for the most part goes to the wayside and you got to line up against the opponent and you find out who's better on that particular occasion. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Bob. Good to see you. All right. We'll go to uh, Andrew Hutchinson next and then Seth Campbell after that. Tony, I just wanted to ask a follow-up about Kevin Copps. I, I don't know how involved you were with his recruitment, but what do you remember? Any memories of him during your last couple of years at Arkansas? And was there anything, I mean, he redshirted his first year at Arkansas. Was there anything that kind of, we're told that he would have this level of success down the line. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll go, you know, not necessarily the last couple of years there, but um, you know, the, the start of the recruiting process was Kevin was the guy that would email you, you know, anytime he woke up breathing 
And uh, it wasn't just to, to us. It was to a lot of other schools, including Houston, where Frank Anderson was working. And, uh, you know, we're at Texas. And uh, normally when you're at a tournament, you know, now things are different, but people will flock to a Dylan Cruz game or, you, you know, a, a game where, you know, a big time superstar is playing. And you kind of got a flow of how the tournament's going to go. And there was a game that really no one belonged to be at. The Southwest Texas Sliders were playing, but there was AM. And then there's Frank from Houston. And we all just kind of laughed at each other. Pretty soon there's like eight guys, and we're all like, he got you too, didn't he? And, you know, he was diligent about emailing you when he was going to pitch, where he was going to be. And, and, you know, a short right handed mid 80s guy, not many people cared. But on that particular occasion, there was about every big school they were watching because they didn't have anything better to do. Well, now all those schools fear Kevin Copps coming out of the bullpen a little bit other than Arkansas. So a pretty cool story overall. But um, the latest kind of memory I have is, you know, seeing his dad at the series and, and he had some nice things to say. It was just good to see him. Just a really good guy. Um, and, and so, you know, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I think he came from a great family. So when you got to meet Kevin, you're like, okay, he's pitching and he's having success for a reason, but he's going to be successful down the road in baseball and in life just because of who he is. And I know his work ethic is probably talked about a ton there. I mean, he probably works too hard. Um, so no surprise that he's successful. And like I said before, I'm very happy for him. But to this extent, there ain't anyone who would ever envision that. Um, he, he's kind of becoming an entity onto himself. And uh, it's a good story for younger kids watching. And it's a good story for his teammates. It's a good story for any other SEC guy that's sitting on the bench watching him pitch when he comes in. All right, Seth said he was good. So we'll go to uh, we'll go back to John, and then we'll finish with Ryan. As far as the uh, scattering report itself, just a matchup between the two teams, seventeen and seven in the league, and it's uh, power against power in so many areas. Yeah, I mean that's that's the definition of this league. Like I said, Jorney used to call it the old pitching coach at Arkansas, the the men's league. And, uh, you know, they're, they're all men's league. I mean, these guys are growing up and they're big and strong and we've gotten beaten by non SEC teams, but um, this league is a power league, power arms, um, incredibly strong bats and bodies that are just fast moving uh, down the line on defense, you name it. And, and they've got that one through nine. I mean, there's not a lot of breathing room in the lineup and you see big physical guys or guys who can hit the ball a long way. Um, and, and then, you know, what's kind of become their mantra before they get to Kevin Copps is a lot of power arms. Um, I don't know what everyone says about us. All I can, you know, kind of feel like they're the cardiac kids at, at some time. I know what our group is just kind of have that find a way type deal is their strong point. But I also think we've got some skill sets um, that we can brag on a little bit at times. So, um, you know, matchups make a, uh, a story sometimes. It'll be interesting to see what is the thing that stands out most as a difference maker between the two teams in game one and then ultimately at the end of the series. I wanted to ask you about Elijah. I think he's pitched three of the last four weekends. Just where's y'all's confidence level with him? And I guess where have you seen him change? Why do you, why do you feel more confident in him than y'all did at start at SEC play? <clears throat> well, you, you sit there in the dugout and um, – you know, you kind of look at what's going on in the game. I mean, if it's a quick one, two, three inning, then it's like, yeah, this guy's throwing the ball well. But the other thing you do as a coach, I, I think, is you watch how the ball's coming out of his hand. And there was a point in there somewhere between Austin P and some of his more recent outings where he just wasn't throwing the ball confidently. And for whatever reason, you could feel that and see it from the dugout, all of us, not just me, um, and the radar gun said it a little bit too, and I don't put too much stock into that, but all telltale signs were he wasn't really behind the baseball with conviction like the way we wanted him to be. And as of late, he has. So again, I kind of go back to that thing. It's it's not anything any other coach wouldn't say. You're going to get beat. Let's get beat with your best punch or your best stuff. And uh, as of right now, when he goes out there, that's kind of the mentality you see kind of coming from him. And, and that's the way the ball's coming out as well. Any others, Sean? No think, more? No more? Anyone else have anything? All right. I don't, oh, want Bob saying, I don't want Bob saying we didn't give him enough time. Uh, he... 
go i think um pig trail nation i don't know your name sorry about that but you go ahead and ask a question if you got one i think you saw you raise your hand there you're still muted there hey tony just with what you've been able to do i mean how how much work has gone into the the last four years getting this program to where it is and getting it back to where you wanted to get tennessee yeah, it's, it's been, uh, I'm not looking for sympathy or anything, but it's been hard to come up for air other than the quarantine. So it's crazy. You're, you're, you're on the grind. You, you, you really, the last three jobs I've had, the first two years were, I felt like life didn't really exist. It was just find a way to get the next thing done. And then last year, we kind of got to a point where we were getting in a little bit of a flow um, and it, it evaporated. And then this year, when we pick things back up, things were so out of whack for our program and everyone else in the country. And you had to deal with protocols and, and all kinds of new challenges. And so it's made for, a, in a weird way, a more stressful year, even though we're not recruiting, our guys are winning some ball games. Uh, so it's been a four, uh, a four year grind, to be honest with you. Um, but in our league with the expectations fans have and administrations and, and quite frankly, the coaching staffs, that's the way it's going to be. So that's what you sign up for. And if it wasn't enjoyable, all of us wouldn't be up here, um, you know, as we are today or any other day. So uh, hopefully the, the fruits of the labor, as they say, will, will, will be out there uh, either this weekend or in general or one day. Um, but I, I think the, the grind or the, the work that's been put in has been enjoyable. And the fans around here and the people are rewarding us, you know, the way that the Arkansas people do as well. Awesome. Yeah, Tony hates Good Bob again. I, I didn't want to disappoint you. Um, <laughs> I know you're thorough. I know you're thorough. Yeah, a, a couple of personnel things. I mean, you obviously have a lot of guys doing a lot of good things, but looking at uh, the stats here, you got, um, I guess you can keep the same rotation in Dallas. He has like 64 Ks and eight walks, which is kind of ridiculous. What is he pitching Friday? And what do you think of him? And then you got, um, yeah, Spencer hitting 404 in the league with 29 walks. What would you say about him? Yeah, so we'll keep the same rotation. It'll be kind of the right, left, right thing with Chad Dallas, who's from a Texas junior college, uh, same one that Jake Arledge played at, who, you know, played at Arkansas. And uh, a lefty, Will Heflin, who will be celebrated on senior day yet again. He's He's been here through thick and thin. Uh, and then on Sunday, we've got a new face in Blade Tidwell, who's an in-state kid, a right-handed pitcher. Um but, but Chad is a guy who pitches with a lot of energy, kind of has Jalen Beeks type toughness where um, he, he doesn't mind a little adversity when it comes, uh, but he's, he's ultra competitive. And on Friday night, you want somebody to lead you into that series battle um, with, with kind of that attitude. And the guys seem to follow him a little bit. They follow him a little too much because he's a goofball in the airport and everywhere else. So they'll, they'll follow him around like little minions in social scenes or settings. Uh, but they do it on the field as well. And I'm, I'm appreciative of that because he approaches it the right way. And then Liam Spence will be our leadoff guy and um, kind of like a Jack Spiggers guy, a junior college just winner uh, that came in and filled a big void at that spot and can get on base for you, but it can also handle the bat well. And then ultimately that's a defensive first position. So that's why he's there to begin with, um, kind of like Jack's. So um, we're very fortunate to have Liam, yet another guy who will be celebrated on Sunday, and uh, his time will come to an end either this year or next year, whenever, uh, but he'll always be loved and welcome back here because he's such a great kid. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tony. You bet. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you need anything else. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.